I'm Father Mitch Paqua, and welcome to EWTN Live, where we bring you guests from around the world. And tonight's guests are two Dominican nuns, both mothers, leaders of one of the fastest growing religious orders in the country. Now, we'll get an update on their community's religious life and hear about what makes vocation work and their charism of education. But first, we'd like to talk briefly with EWTN's Peter Gagnon about some upcoming special events and new programming. Peter, what do you have for us? We have a very big week beginning next week. Yes. Uh, the International Eucharistic Congress yes. in Budapest, Hungary. Yes. So it's the 52nd international one. And we're actually going to be on the ground with full coverage beginning on day one on Sunday okay. with the opening mass. They're going to have um, a large group of first communions at that opening mass. Nice. And then um, it's going to be our coverage is going to be hosted by um, Matthew Bunton and Father John Paul. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout the week, there's catechesis, there's testimonies every day. Um, on Wednesday, there's a Byzantine liturgy, there's a Eucharistic adoration event, mm -hmm. um, and also on uh, a beautiful event on Saturday evening, they're going to do a Eucharistic procession from the uh, Parliament in Kosovo Square all the way back to Harrow Square, and a Eucharistic procession, candlelight procession through the streets, ending with a Mass. It's going to be really beautiful. And then Sunday, is the um, closing mass with uh, uh, Holy Father Pope Francis coming in for, so he'll arrive there, he'll have some meetings with mm -hmm. some of the people there mm -hmm. and then do the closing mass. So it's really gonna be a fantastic event. Um, we have a website set up for it. It's okay. ewtn.com forward slash IEC for the International Eucharistic Congress. Mm -hmm. People can go there, they can see when all the events are airing. Also uploaded on that site are gonna be like Reflections on the Eucharist by Mother Angelica and some other fillers and they can actually see some of the programming as well. Nice. And so, and then on that Sunday, there's the beatification of Cardinal Wyszynski, which is happening in Poland, So, but it's happening the same day, and we're gonna be um, airing that later in the day, and so that's obviously a very big event for, yeah. uh, for Poles yeah. around the world. Oh, so. so, Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski was one of mm -hmm. my heroes growing up. Yeah. He was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, nice. and actually he's going to be um, beatified with um, Mother Rosa Maria, also a Polish nun. Okay. And then um, immediately after the end of the uh, Eucharistic Congress, the Pope then goes on to a papal visit to Slovakia. So we'll provide full coverage of that um, that following week as well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of back to back to back events. And then the next exciting thing are new series that we're debuting um, in September. So a few of these series, we're, we're delaying a little bit of the debut because of all the Eucharistic Congress programming. Mm -hmm. But um, we have a brand new series called Living Divine Mercy. Okay. It's really a weekly program with um, the Marians in Stockbridge, yes. Massachusetts. Yes. It's gonna be shot um, It's there on location at the shrine in Stockbridge. Um, Father Chris Aylar and yes. different Marians are gonna be um, hosting that program. It's really a, a great, a beautiful program. Uh, how Divine Mercy impacts lives, and uh, there's going to be packages with, with people who have gone through uh, different struggles in life and how the Divine Mercy message really has, has helped them out. Secondly, um, we have the, your guest tonight, the Dominican Sisters, the Mary Mother of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. We're going to be airing new programming with them, so we're very excited. You know, they've always been very popular when we have them on the air, the Truth and the Heart series with them. So all new programming with them, which is fantastic. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's really going to be a variety of different programs that, that we have with them. So that's going to be really great. And then we would look at uh, another series it's called Metanoia. So Father David Pavonka, who we had a series in the past with, mm -hmm. and people really loved him. Well, this new series, uh, Metanoia, is what he'll be presenting that. So, um, and then the series that we did with you, uh, Polish Catholic. Yeah. Um, so we did, we turned them into specials initially in, in five one hour specials or six one hour specials, but we decided to trim them down to give them a regular weekly slot. So that was a trip you did to Poland. Uh, yeah. You met some long lost relatives, yeah. visited shrines and um, a lot of discussions on, uh, you know, the saints of Poland. And so people really, really appreciated that series. So we decided let's make it weekly. So cool. we turned that into 13 episodes. And then um, two other offerings one is quick is EWTN Great Britain. So our, our office in Walsingham, they've created a lot of different programming uh, focused on Great Britain with um, 
Turley talks and Walsingham stories and, and a lot of different interviews and stuff coming from from there. And then finally, um, The Promise is a, another series uh, that we're going to be airing is The Promise, We Said I Do Forever. It's about marriage and uh, the marriage bond and how to how to really build your marriage. And um, it's just a, a huge offering coming in September. So go to um, for the International Eucharistic Congress, EWTN forward slash IEC. And then for all the other series, go to our EWTN.com page and go to the click on the TV Yep. Icon. See all that stuff. A lot coming up. A lot coming up. We've been working. Thank you very much for letting mm -hmm. us know about that. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with tonight's guests. Please stay with us or the nuns will holler at us all. <laughs> <laughs> so be with us. going to get a small peek into the changing of the guard at a religious order of women. This is a community that was founded in 1997 with only four sisters. Today, they've grown to 157 sisters. Now, that's not a very long time for them to get that done. And they have 18 convents around the country and one in Rome. Their main service and charism is Catholic education and classrooms from kindergarten through college. They are spreading the word about their vibrant community through a media platform called Open Light Media. So please welcome from the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist in Ann Arbor, Michigan, a longtime friend of mine, Mother Assumpta Long, and Mother Amada Veritas, Ellen Becker. Mothers, welcome. Yes. Thank, oh, well, you, thank Father. you, Father. Thank Good you. to have you Good here. Good to see you again. Now, wait a second. No, one of the things, some of our viewers aren't Catholic. Why is it that your sisters, you aren't sisters, now you're mothers. What's, what's going on here? Well, Father, um, in case you don't know, the, the church is a very wise mother and a very yes. loving mother. And so um, terms are limited for those in authority which is a great thing. Yes. And for Dominicans, I imagine for most religious communities, this is the norm. But we have uh, <clears throat> a six year term renewed by, it can be renewed by six years, and then another major superior prior general is elected. So uh, I know some, of the, some people wonder because I was the prior general for so long, but what happened is that we were a new community and you go through steps. And so every step you take, you kind of start over. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, but it, it was time, and the Holy Spirit was working overtime with the new election of, of uh, the leadership, which is Mother Amada Veritas is the Prior General now. And there's a new council, and so it's just um, it's a wonderful thing, and that's the that's the way the wisdom of the church, I think, is to do this, yeah. because you don't want to. Um, you need new ideas, new blood, you know, so it's great. But one of the other things, too, and I think this is sort of what I was also getting at, is, you know, the rest of the community is addressed as sister, yes. you mm -hmm. two as mother, because oh. you were the superiors. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. Do you have any comments yeah. on that, yes. Mother? Well, I think the, the biggest part of being the major superior for our community is called the Prior's General, and then we address her as Mother. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it just is a, a sign of our esteem and our love for her leadership within the community. Sure. Um, and and it really the, her spiritual leadership, that she is the, the mother of all the daughters, of all of us sisters mm -hmm. um, in the community. Um, it, one of the things I like about it as well is that it gets across this idea 
of the church as family, mm -hmm. not right. as a business yes. or yes. political organization. Yes. That there's a relationship between the superior, not just as superior to inferior, mm -hmm. yeah. but as mm -hmm. mothers to daughters. And especially with mm -hmm. our vow of obedience, <laughs> is, is the, the addressing the major superior as mother really shows a filial relationship that um, when she asks to you do something out of obedience, that it's out of a love and a care for the sisters. Sure. Um, right, right, right. And yeah. we, I mentioned that it was just started in 1997. Mm -hmm. You and three other sisters right. started this new community, we correct? Did. We did. And you know, when, whenever you're gonna do this, you have to have a benevolent bishop. So Cardinal O'Connor from New York was our benevolent bishop. And so uh, I had really worked with him with the Sisters of Life. So it was, it was a, a wonderful uh, relationship and he was so good to us. I mean, he gave us his best kind of lawyer. Um, we lived in a, well, that's another story. <laughs> we lived in a barn, which was not exactly a barn. Gave us his best, so we had time to really work on the constitutions mm -hmm. to, um, you know, have time to pray. He gave us a beautiful, we had a chapel in what was a former horse stall, and it was beautiful. And the Cardinal gave us a tabernacle to use, so we had time for prayer. We had time for, uh, there was a swimming pool on the property, but anyway, <laughs> we had time to play. But a lot of time we had time to really work on um, our constitutions, to say what we really did want so that, that's basically, basically what happened. <clears throat> but see, one of the th elements that is important about this is a lot of communities of women religious have been declining in numbers and aging. And, and some communities have been ordered by the local bishops to stop accepting novices yeah. mm -hmm. because they cannot guarantee there'll be enough sisters around to complete their training. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I gave a retreat to a sister from California and her community was down to uh, 27 yeah. from 800 right. down to 27 mm -hmm. and she was in the middle uh, of the age group at 72. Um, and so the, the, this meant that they were, uh, the bishop, uh, then I think it was Cardinal Honey, had basically decided you're going to have to, you know, mm -hmm. cease to exist as an order. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not the only one. There are hundreds of oh, yes, other orders yes, going through that. Mm -hmm. You, on the other hand, have an order where the median age is what? 30? 30, 32, 33 32, right now. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas for a lot, of, for most of the orders, they have less than 1% who are under 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your median age is in the early mm -hmm. 30s. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, why is this going on? Tell us about what is attracting so many young women to join your community. Yeah, let's yeah. start off I mean, with I, the yeah. younger I, one of them. Yeah, that's yeah, all that's, right. <laughs> that's okay. I can think back of when I first encountered the community is one thing that really drew me into seriously thinking religious life is just the joy of the sisters. And mm -hmm. the joy mm -hmm. comes from, when you peel back all the layers, the joy comes from an authentic living of religious life, which mm -hmm. means communal prayer. You know, we pray the divine office and, and we have a communal Eucharistic adoration, uh, holy hour, and then our communal apostolate and our habit, the sign that we belong to Christ, you know, whether we're in a classroom or we're in the airport, um, you know, that we belong to each other, that we belong to a corporate body as Dominican mm -hmm. sisters as well. But, but see, and it's not yeah. just that you are wearing a habit that shows you belong to Christ, it shows that you belong in a specifically Dominican yes. manner. Yes. That you have a, a vocation mm -hmm. to follow the rule mm -hmm. and insights mm -hmm. and wisdom of St. Dominic yeah. and all the others before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And as you take it, on, as you live religious life and you take on all of these aspects of our life, you become more and more secure in the identity of the community mm -hmm. and that forms you and your religious vocation. Right. And I think sometimes when you first enter, you don't exactly know what you're encountering, but as you are formed, you understand all of these exteriors of a religious mm -hmm. life are to form you to ultimately become a great Dominican saint um, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as well. To kind of go off of what Mother was saying is that um, our, we have an excellent formation mm -hmm. program. I mean, these young women who come are really steeped in the doctrines of the church. Yes. Um, you know, I, I'm just so Do, pleased. Well, let me ask you this. Do they come with lots of knowledge of church not teaching? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Right. So, so no. this is part would, of your yeah. formation. Oh, yes, yes. Also. yes. And we start with the basics, I mean, you know, catechism, yes. of the, to make sure that they're thoroughly grounded in the teachings of the church. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that we give um, an excellent education to these young women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we are yes. in education, so, um, that we, you know, we make sure that they are properly educated mm -hmm. in places, that they get the degrees necessary. Because mm -hmm. you're teaching a variety of subjects. Yes. Uh, yes. Mother, yes. you taught yeah. uh, English literature. Yes, and I've taught history. And mm -hmm. you've taught history, mm -hmm. but you were more trained in literature, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of your sisters are formed in science. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. science, math. Math? math. Anything, uh, yes. English, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just mm -hmm. everything. So, so. so in addition to yeah. their training in the faith, yeah. they learn these other yeah. And I find mm -hmm. that that's um, a very positive thing when I probably received and you will still be receiving maybe over 400 requests to please come to our school. And if I, I really believe if we had a m million sisters, we could use them because people are so anxious to, you know, have really, we hear from bishops, priests, laity, mm -hmm. please, our school needs sisters. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that, that breaks my heart, you know, when I think of many religious communities got out of teaching. And we know that the lay, many, many lay people are not catechized, which is unfortunate, you know, or maybe, you know. But see, one, one of the things that, I may be wrong on this, but it's, it's an impression I've had over the last 50 years when I began to, you know, it was in the 60s that sisters began to withdraw from the classrooms mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. But one of them is it, it, th there were so many other exciting possibilities to serve. Oh, yeah. yeah. And not, not only hospitals and schools, but yeah. also in social work mm -hmm. and times of social mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that didn't seem to be the kind of apostolate that really drew uh, young women yeah. to join them. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's been my impression. Does that yeah. fit your experience? Or? I think one thing is we can really see, um, you know, and when you're every day in the classroom, you don't always see the fruit of your work, you know. No. But, mm -hmm. but I, you know, as we go through now a couple, you know, 12 yeah. years, 16 years, 20 years of being in the classroom and you meet your students, you know, later in life and they know the faith and they mm -hmm. love the faith and they love what you taught them. Mm -hmm. And now they're teaching their children and you can really see. So sometimes the everyday teaching, you get glimpses of how you're touching the students or how they're receiving, you know, because you're only leading them to Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole goal. Yeah. I think that's why we miss sisters so much in the classroom is because really a sister's goal is to lead that child to Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, you can teach English, you can teach science, but my goal necessarily isn't to get them to college, it's to get them yeah, to Christ yeah. and eternal life. Yeah. You know, another thing important. I think that, um, you know, education is a difficult, I mean, it, it's, it's difficult. And I think of our poor sisters and our principals in particular going through COVID and yet the Catholic schools have got a lot of positive feedback because uh, even you know now that they stayed open and they're getting students from the public schools yes. but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that um, it's 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 just difficult today I mean um, you're fighting a lot of um, culture <laughs> you're fighting a lot of uh, just to be prepared and to know the issues 
I mean, do you think young people, particularly in the mm -hmm. high school, are, are so confused about our culture, you know, and so, you know, you just do, it's just so important that we're there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not only that they're confused, <laughs> they are oftentimes left without information. They're left yeah. ignorant. They're not stupid. Yeah. No, they're not very at all. smart. Not at all. They're very smart. But they're left ignorant. That is, they don't know much. And again, my sense, uh, having taught high school yeah. for a number of years, um, myself five years for me, uh, there's a tedium to teaching. Yeah. And especially with the younger the child is, the more tedious because it's not just the topic. You're disciplining yes. and guiding yeah, and waking All up. The time. <laughs> yes. Reminding. Yeah. Dealing yeah. with the bad yeah. behavior that yeah. some boys might have had. <laughs> yeah. Not girls, but certainly some of the boys might yes. have been misbehaving in class. And so <laughs> oh, yeah. there's a the, lot more to teaching than just the subject. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they have to and know that know. they come from a place of, when you're teaching them, you're coming from a place of loving them and seeing them yeah, and knowing them. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think part of the feminine genius is to bring that maternal instinct, that maternal oh, yes, training. Yes. You're not their physical mothers, mm -hmm. but you are their spiritual yes. mothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because, uh, like, Mother said, you don't even, most of the time in teaching, your students leave you, you never know. And yet, one, sometimes you'll get a feedback and you'll say, oh my goodness, I don't even remember saying that. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> something yes. that really, yes. really meant something yes. Yes. that, um, I don't remember teaching a, a, that, not long ago, I got a letter from one I taught 70 years ago, probably in the first grade. And he has a band, he has some real long hair, and he said, I was telling my band about something you told me in the first grade. They said, well, tell mother that. So he, he had a hard time finding me, but he found me. He said what I had said. It didn't even sound like me. I mean, I think, I, I guess I said it, but I mean, so you know, God can use you. You know, mm -hmm. God can use you. So it's... Um, and you don't it, know. Yeah, that's it, right. it's, like the book of Ecclesiastes yes. says, you cast your bread on the water. water. You know, you just mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm. what, where it's going to float yeah. and who's going to eat it. Yeah, that's true. Because I, uh, uh, I, I get the same thing. Mm -hmm. the things yeah. I said, I said, yeah, that's, that <laughs> was a good say, thought. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, sometimes it's better than you could come up with, you know. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, let's take a look. We, we have a little clip uh, about some of this education work. We have Sister John Paul, um, you know, from your community. Oh, and she talks about uh, something we want to address, which is education in virtue. So let's take a look at her. I think one of the things that comes into play when we're talking about educating our young people in virtue is it's an immediate challenge to ourselves. We have to say, well, gosh, do I believe it's possible for them to practice virtue? You know, when I approach my daughter, my son, my child, you know, my student, when I approach this young person, do I really approach them in a sense that gives them a chance at a fresh start? Do I believe that it's possible for them to grow in virtue. And when we have to answer that question, we also have to answer the question of, do I believe I'm capable of greatness? And I think every adult that approaches this education in virtue program has to be able to say, well, gosh, what do I really think about this? You know, you know, like, do I really think the point of life is to be called to holiness? Do I really think the point of life is that I'm supposed to get to heaven, my spouse is supposed to get to heaven, my job is to help my children or my students get to heaven. Do we really believe that? When she talks about this education in virtue, mm -hmm. you are, she and, and you all are discussing a very Dominican mm -hmm. approach. Yes, very mm -hmm. Domestic. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas Aquinas, mm -hmm. yes. one of the early yeah. Dominicans, mm -hmm used training in virtue as his approach to moral theology. Mm -hmm. And 
you are teaching that as yes. well, correct? Yes. yes. Right. Sister John Dominic uh, has done a terrific job in putting this program yes. together, mm -hmm. and it's really, gr I mean, it's taken off, you know, and maybe in, in all of the other, one of the other platforms, you mm -hmm. know. Open you light know. media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a great thing, and to teach that in virtue, instead yes. of, you know, I think, even when I taught, instead of correcting a child in a sense, say, what virtue do you need to practice? What, what virtue do you need to practice? Or what did you, you know, um, what? Anyway, it just it goes something like that. It's a very positive approach with children. And she's done a terrific job yes. in trying to yeah. get this out. And the, the material that is sent out by the community, I mean, um, it's, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, with, with the Education and Virtue program, it takes a look at, you know, how to educate the child in the virtues, which is educating them to lead a happy, holy life. And one of the things we've talked about a lot with it is, you know, there are 157 of us, and we can be in a lot of schools, but we can't be in all the schools mm -hmm. that we're asked to be in or invited to be in. But this program is a way also to have an outreach of our community into other schools and supporting them to teach the Christian life um, and to teach the um, for, to teach the virtues. Mm -hmm. um, so the the school it, it's very much supported by the, the by uh, the community and and, and helping. Um, and a lot of the sisters use the education and virtue within their own classrooms. So it's like teacher tried, yeah. teacher tested. Um, and also we all have to grow in virtue. The adult, as Sister mm -hmm. John Paul was talking about, as teachers, we're working on the same virtues our students are yeah. working on. So we can right. really model. Yeah. I mean, that's the Christian life, no matter what stage of, yeah. of the Christian life you're at. When you yeah. speak about training people in the virtues, mm -hmm. which virtues all of them. <laughs> you know, the, 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 you know, the, you know, the theological, the theological virtues, virtues, the, the cardinal virtues, virtues yeah. all but, the daughter virtues, oh, you know, yeah. to use St. Thomas's, where's the daughter yeah. virtues of, you know, just under justice and prudence and temperance and fortitude. You know, what's mm -hmm. interesting is that um, this is going on to all the home. Yeah, we know that parents are the primary education of their children. We know that. But what is happening is that parents themselves are catching on to this yes, program yes. and doing and can, doing it in family mm -hmm. life, you know, yes. looking at um, uh, you foresight, know, yeah, patience. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a mm -hmm. great thing. I'm learning from it. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, yes. so mm -hmm. we all we all have to you know grow in virtue, and so um, don't I know it? Mm -hmm. Don't you know? We'll be doing that the rest of our lives. But yeah. uh, it's just exciting. You know, we, especially you know, I say when your little children um, learn learn these virtues, mm -hmm. and they they uh, even go home and teach them to their parents. I mean, explain it to their parents. You can imagine, I'm sure. But it, it's it's a great thing. And the materials lead you through a lot of ability to be very flexible in how it's implemented. So how a school takes it into their culture and helps them to the education and virtue helps them to form the culture. Um, and it's not just a strict program or approach. It's very much the, the school appropriating how to use this vocabulary, this common vocabulary of the virtues. Yeah. Um, so it's just mm. really, a really good program. Yeah. Right. And you know, I, uh, this morning, you know, I preached about the theological mm -hmm. virtues. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's so dependent on God's grace, but there are these other virtues uh, known as the cardinal virtues mm -hmm. cardinal that are really uh, uh, Aristotle, mm -hmm. a pagan yeah. philosopher, was well aware of these. He systematized them, and, yeah. and these are human mm -hmm. virtues that yeah. uh, we need lots of prudence. Mm -hmm. We need justice, especially as some people talk about justice in our culture and use violence mm -hmm. to try yeah. to enforce it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and yeah. anger, you know, they, they yeah. easily slip into the capital sins in order to promote a virtue. I said, yeah, this I know, is inconsistent. Yes, yes. That's right. And this is, again, part of what you're talking about is that uh, when, in contrast mm -hmm. to yeah. those who want justice and peace mm -hmm. now, yeah. no justice, no peace, and I'm furious. <laughs> I want this justice now. I'll burn your building down. 
and huff and puff while I'm doing it. Um, this, on the other hand, your approach is let's live virtuously mm -hmm. in order to teach yeah. it. Yes. That's you know very what? distinct in this culture. Yeah. Yes. You made me think about that because we know that justice of the cardinal virtues is the greatest, but but still, maybe this is what we've got. Uh, we know that you have to have prudence. If you don't have prudence, <laughs> you don't practice the other virtues. I mean, you've, so it's, it's the, I mean, I, lo I love the, the church and the teachings of the church and all of these wonderful things that we get from, of course, our, we always are partial Thomas Aquinas. You know, he's the, well, he's a great be. teacher. Yeah. So are we Jesuits. Yeah. Oh, good, good, oh, good. Yeah. St. Ignatius <laughs> good. Made, put that in our uh, constitution. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. good. He studied at the University of Paris. He oh, learned okay. yeah, to right. mystic theology. Yeah. So that's good. That's good Quite. stuff. And yeah. uh, as a matter of fact, in general, when the church moves away from Thomism, it tends to move towards foolishness. <laughs> Do you know? Well, Just say. Yeah. Not. I remember. Uh, of, I don't know how many years ago. What you found that trend. And now I see it coming back because mm -hmm. it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't work, you know, yeah. trying to get away from Thomism and yeah. it doesn't. He's proven, I mm -hmm. mean, it's proven through the centuries. Yeah, it's, you know. the, the only temptation that I think we have to be alert to is that people can become rigid Thomists right. who yeah. repeat these forms and say, it yes. works, this works, this, and all fits here. but. It doesn't come alive. Mm -hmm. It has oh, yeah. to be oh, yeah. very much yeah. alive. And this is where the virtue education mm -hmm. helps Thomism come to life yes. in very yeah. concrete ways that That's kids true. and their parents That's can understand. Yes. But so. one of the elements that we have to have is not only prudence, but temperance. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we are running out of time for this segment. Oh. So with temperance, we'll restrain speech, yeah. take a break, and then we want to open it up to your questions and comments. So please stay with us. Right, we are continuing our discussion with Mother Assumpta Long and now her successor, newly elected mm -hmm. Prior's General, Mother Amata Veritas. And before we get back to, to your question, I just want to mention that the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, have a program and you can watch it on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Saturdays, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And again on Wednesdays at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. So you'll be getting up with them. Yes, yes actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so we'll have that on. Let's take some questions. We're going to start off with Thomas. Thomas, how are you doing? How are you, Father? Fine. This is Thomas from Tennessee. Oh, yes, from Tennessee. Kingsport, See, that Tennessee. makes Mother Sumter <laughs> Long happy. It does. What's that? It makes Mother Sumter Long very happy. She's from there. Well, they make me very happy being on the show because I have to tell you, uh, mothers and father, uh, that um, I am so indebted to you, well, the nuns that taught me in grade school, because um, it is they have made me realize that everything they taught me, and I didn't realize until I was 39, everything they taught me in grade school was true. But here's my question. My question is, your community, which I'm familiar with because there's a nun from Kingsport, that Sister Mary Michael, that's in your community, and she, and uh, you have grown so quickly and uh, as compared to other communities, which I believe 
it is because, and for lack of better words, that other communities aren't as orthodox as you are. Because I've realized that in my own life, that living in the fullness of the truth of the Catholic Church, it gives you, it gives you joy. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes me happy. And uh, that's the only way I'm happy is living in the fullness of the truth. So that's my question. Yeah, so yeah. does that, yeah, I guess he's asking uh, uh, to say, is it that living of Catholic yes. truth mm -hmm. and Catholic life that is the source of joy in your community that attracts so many yes. young yeah. women? Yes, I think yeah. there's two yeah. things. I think mm -hmm. it's the joy of, the, of living the Christian life um, and living it authentically to, with our vocation in our vocation. But it's also there's an aspect of we want young women to join us. So yeah. we have worked very hard for vocations with our vocation director, Sister Joseph Andrew, works very hard. And also yes, the sisters does. work very hard within their, their communities on their missions to invite young women to consider um, a vocation to our community or to other religious communities. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're not only, I think, living authentically and joyously our life, but also we're inviting others to live our life. And we make that possible um, by showing them the joy of living our vocation. You know, I have been so pleased with Sister Joseph Andrew in the sense that if young women come and she interviews them <clears throat> and she thinks well, they, they belong to the Missionaries of Charity or to a cloistered community, if that seems to be best, she will advise them mm -hmm. to go to the sister servants or, or wherever mm -hmm. she, sure. mm -hmm. but you know, I was thinking about something when you said that, you know, I can remember when people would say that, I kind of be shocked when they'd say, they're so attracted to our community that they say because of the joy. And I remember thinking, oh, well, why wouldn't you be, you know what I mean? I, I, you just didn't notice it that mm -hmm. much, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Anyway. Or you might take it for granted. Yeah, I think we take it for granted. A lot of, I think a lot of places, um, there's a certain amount of f such focus on things like justice and social yeah. change mm -hmm. that make a lot of people very, very angry, not only yeah. in some mm -hmm. of the secular political movements, but even with among religious people, they become so angry, you know, that it's not fun to be with them. Um. Let's go over to another caller. Christy, where are you calling from? Hello? Hi, where are you calling from? Hi, I'm calling from New Jersey. This Wonderful. This is so oh. exciting. It's my birthday. And oh, happy you, birthday. You are my family. Oh. Father Mitch, you are the most brilliant mind I have ever come across in my lifetime. And I always say, um, I say that when I try to offer catechesis in general <laughs> to people. Sisters, you mean everything to me. Um, I bought your videos when I taught catechism. I used your second and third grade teachings with my public school children. And they are in eighth grade now, and I haven't seen them, actually. And I've been estranged from my own family for the past two years because of my faith. They saw me growing in a positive direction and it scared them and it frightened them. I wound up in a monastery in Hawaii and returned home before the pandemic. Wow. And unfortunately, things did not get better and um, we haven't talked and maybe you could keep that in your prayers. I yes, didn't mean to definitely. sidetrack into that direction, but mm -hmm. after hearing Thomas's call and saying basically everything he said was everything that I went through, I knew at 38 years old that everything I learned in Catholic school was true and I saw from my own experiences in life that the lack of presence and sisters is 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 horrifying and how bad they're needed out there and I felt like I had a vocation when I was six years old so I spent 10 years trying to live poverty chastity obedience and it was freaking people out <laughs> but um, I was so happy so now the past two years I tried to survive this pandemic establish myself um, in the secular world, and it's been fun, but I got bills, and I'm miserable, oh, and <laughs> and I'm trying to work my way back up to where I was before, and get a little grace back on, because the difference in um, being deprived from the sacraments, being deprived from adoration, being deprived from being my true self, and just 
screaming Jesus 24 7 took a toll on me. Sure. But, sure. Um, I sure. do recommend that anyone teaching at home get your videos, especially yes, for your children, yes, so yes. that you can constantly refer and you will learn so much as an adult because chances are if you were born after 90, 1955, you didn't get it. <laughs> well, Thank one you. of the things that we've heard here at EWTN where we have played these DVD, mm -hmm. these videos yeah. Yeah. that you did, mm -hmm. we hear from a lot of parents yeah. about uh, ex exactly as Christy was saying, that as adults they learn so much mm -hmm. that they didn't know. Yeah. And they enjoy being with their children learning this because they're learning their faith better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you, by the way, for Thank your you. for your mm -hmm. kindness yeah. uh, and your nice thoughts there, Christy. So, yes. but the, but isn't that oh, true yeah. that so yes, many adults right. are are you know finding that wow, this is something I I was missing. Yes. And I need uh -huh. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is uh, a little not related, but it is because I think you know you're. Uh, dealing with families that are out there, you know, uh, financially struggling and trying to, you know, do the best for their children. And I did want to say something about the community that it's not just all, they, I mean, <laughs> you have to look to a very practical buildings and mother. And so I did want to say Sister Mary Samuel has done a terrific job in uh, taking care of so many of the physical things mm -hmm. of the community. And that's necessary too. Sure. I mean, mm -hmm. so. Um, Anyway, we've got a lot of talented. Mm -hmm. We've got so many talented sisters, and each one contributes so much to community. Mm -hmm. I'm just amazed, like the ones technology. I think, oh my gosh, this. But just each sister brings so much to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, each sister her yeah. own gifts, and it makes it makes it even more beautiful. One could even know, say so. balanced. Yeah. yeah, nice and balanced. Yes, yeah, nice and balanced. We have uh, another. Caller, I can't see the name. Hello? Hello? Oh, are you Cindy? Cindy? Yes, I am. Where are you calling from? Massachusetts. Wonderful. And what is your question? I was just wondering how old do you have to be in order to be a nun? Is there a limit on age? Mm -hmm. And um, if you can pray for my sister Beth and my niece Alicia, the they lost the faith, and I'm trying to evangelize. Gosh. Good for, for you, that. Cindy. Yeah. Uh, I'll Lord will use you. Watch and see. Yeah. No matter how okay. long it takes, the Lord will use you. But yeah. what, what? And what is the age limit? Um, Cindy sounds a little bit younger than I, so down at the <laughs> lower level. Yeah. And then what might be? For those of us older, yes. the upper age limit. Yeah. Yeah. We accept um, young women that are 18, graduated from high school. Um, so a number enter at that age, and then all the way up to around the early 30s. Early 30s. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah there, there's, you know, uh, you may have heard of this, Mother, but sometimes as people get older, they get a little <laughs> more set in their ways. Are you saying something? No. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm talking about myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. And you know, there are communities that accept yes. uh, older. Yeah. And yes. so you refer them to, you know, if they've got a, a, a vocation, there's even a community that will accept people with physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sure. and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. but we, we can't um, because of our apostolate sure. and. Um, you know, we just. Yes. I yeah. think the most popular age is to enter are, you know, 18 in the college ages, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that yeah. about 21, 22, right after college is another uh, kind of a yeah. large group usually enters at that <laughs> age too. This, and this is uh, an important thing in terms of vocation. I mean, uh, certainly um, when you and I were younger, people did enter at earlier ages. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. How old were you? Sixteen. And see, and I was. Uh, but I was out of high. I was. I was out of high school. Okay. Well, I was fourteen and went to high school seminary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. partly because people expected yeah. us yeah. to make a decision oh, yes. early. And I think I think people then were ready to make a decision. I mean, I think I mm -hmm. was ready, you know, yeah. to make a decision. So. Uh, uh, Again, there was no idea of sitting no. around in your pajamas playing video <laughs> games in the basement of your parents' home. That's right. That That's, right. That's right. No way. Yeah. So, yeah, but now that I think there is yeah. a little bit 
a yeah. little bit old, not too much, mm -hmm. but a little bit older, and they can make a, a better yeah. decision uh, that. We have another caller. Hello, Tony? Yeah, I'll find Hi. Mitch. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Plainfield, Massachusetts. Are you? Yeah, That's good. a cool town. I <laughs> like that place. Um, the reason why I'm calling is another question is a statement. I get to the Sisters of Mary uh, every three months, and the reason why I started doing this about, oh, about three years ago, um, when I grew up, I'm 76 years old now, when I grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, um, I had five brothers and sisters myself. Very, we were very poor. The Catholic Church at the time made sure that each and every one of us went to a Catholic school uh, free of charge. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why we could do that is because the nuns were teaching in the Catholic school. Mm -hmm. They were almost yeah. nothing. And that was the only reason why that we were able to go. And that's why I really look, at, even though all nuns do great jobs in whatever they uh, feel they're in, but I'm very, uh, very partial to the sisters that teach our children because it's so needed so much in this country right now. And I really appreciate what you people do. Thank, thank you, Tony. Thank Again, you. I, thank you, and thank you for your support. You. Yeah. I would resonate in my own spirit. We yeah. paid $2 a month yeah. wow. to go to Catholic school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, it was the generosity of the sisters mm -hmm. yeah. that made yeah. it possible in the 40s and 50s to go to a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. should have nothing but gratitude for what oh, they yeah. did. It was just and you know, there, there should be no Catholic child who would not be given that privilege, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, you know, that we have to, you know, make sure that, that we would do what we can to, you know, to help that, yeah. you know. That and it, I, I think at times when we look back, the sisters were not taken care of as well as they should have been by the parishes. Yeah. I think there yeah. were some yeah. elements of that. not being totally just yeah. as mm -hmm. the process of aging and everything else yeah. does and need for medical care. Yeah. And, you know, we people did need to be more generous. I, in those days, they couldn't afford yeah. much tuition. We barely were able to pay the $2 a month yeah. in my family. Well, same here. Yep, yep. But mm -hmm. I think yeah. as Tony's a great example yeah. that as a graduate of that, yeah. he can be generous mm -hmm. to the sisters yeah. now mm -hmm. because he has had work that that education made possible. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, I think, you know, along Tony's lines too, a lot of folks don't realize this. The big waves of Catholics came later in our country's uh -huh. history. The Irish were first, yeah. but the Germans came second, and then Eastern and Southern Europeans up you know, from the 1880s through the 1920s, yeah. and then the uh, yeah. immigration was cut off. But what's very important is that in though we were late comers, by 1960, Catholics became the second best educated religious group in the country mm -hmm. and the second wealthiest mm -hmm. as a result. Mm -hmm. yeah. The best educated were the Jewish community that came at the same yeah. time mm -hmm. from the same areas, mm -hmm. and they became the wealthiest too. They were better educated. But it was you know, the generosity of religious Jews that made Jewish education possible, That's and the sisters, brothers, and priests who made Catholic education. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing mm -hmm. transformation mm -hmm. in a period of 80, 90 oh, years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And we outstripped the colonial religions mm -hmm. that were here before us. Father, do you mind if I, I, I want to say this, go back to the first question, yeah, um, yeah. just as a little P.S., but he mentioned, uh, his, the one from Kingsport, Tennessee, Yes. Uh, he mentioned Sister Mary Michael, and I want to say that she's now our Vicarish General, mm -hmm. which yes. is right on it, mm -hmm. so she was elected 
as the second in yes. command. But yes. anyway, uh -huh. I just wanted. But it was interesting that he mentioned her name. Oh, so that's, pretty that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Huh? Those, those yeah. people in big places. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. In, in, in terms of Catholic education, no, no matter what, it, it will be more expensive to have a Catholic education today than it was in the 1950s. Right, right. We won't have no. $2 a month mm -mm. education. That's not going to happen. No. But is it possible for there to be a revitalization of Catholic schools with more sisters coming along? Is that, do you see that as a possibility no. in the parishes? You know, Father, and I was talking to Mother about this, mm -hmm. and whatever you think about it, but uh, we get so many, it, it's, it's a hard decision, you think, um, because we get so many invitations to go all over. Is it better to do this or to put more sisters in an individual school? It's mm -hmm. just, uh, and so I think we've been kind of spreading out, and I mean, it's just a question to ask, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they have more impact if they're teaching more mm -hmm. students in the mm -hmm. school than if, but still, you look at parishes that are begging for sisters. So sure. it's, you know, it's, it's hard. You feel mm -hmm. the so same way. Yeah. If I could make mm -hmm. a suggestion, I remember a line from St. Teresa of Avila. Oh. She yeah. said that religious are like fertilizer. When you spread them out, <laughs> they make things grow. Yes. Okay. If you put too many in one place, they become a pile that smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. <laughs> That's good. We want to, again, encourage people to watch Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, Saturdays at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and Wednesdays, again, at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a series that you can continue to learn from uh, the, these sisters, the, this particular community. And I want to just mention that there are other communities also growing, mm -hmm. yeah. That's doing true. quite well. Yeah. That's Carmelite true. Sisters of Alhambra, yeah. yes. and a number of, who also are teaching mm -hmm. as well, semi yeah. contemplative. It's wonderful. There are a number of communities that are growing, but yes. it's, again, as you said, Coming to life, coming to prayer, mm -hmm. habit, common yes. identity, mm -hmm. and the joy of living the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. These would be the keys, yes. wouldn't you say? That's true. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's true. Thank you for being oh. with us. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Yes. Good Thank to you, see Father. you. And Good. want to give you and our audience Thank a you, blessing. Father. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And again, please keep us in between your gas bill, electric bill, and cable bill, and we'll pay our <laughs> bills too. Thank you all for your support, and God bless.